One of the most powerful additions to version 5.0 of Autoplay Media Studio is the ability to use functions in your script. This allows us to define code and reuse it by simply calling back the name of the function. It's a lot easier than it looks and we'll go ahead and take a look at that now. Functions are very powerful but they seem to be somewhat misunderstood and we're going to go ahead and debunk any of the mystery around functions in this, in this lesson and the next few lessons. So let's go ahead and look at what we've got here. This is a basic function. We've declared our function with the function and end statements here and then in between we have a few other things. As you can see here in red we've named our function so the function name can be anything you want but typically you would try and make it descriptive of the function. So if we were creating a function to calculate taxes you might name your function calculate tax. Don't put any spaces in the name names of your functions. Just use these underscore letters wherever you need to put a space between words. And stick to the whatever good naming convention you're, you've been using for variables and tables and whatnot. So basically you would want to use uh, uh, something descriptive and try not to use uh, um, numbers first or, or that sort of a thing. You would have to stick to the typical naming convention that you follow for variables and tables. Okay, so Next we've got in the brackets here arguments. Now these are optional. These are variables that are going to be passed to our function. We'll take a look at that a little later in this uh, lesson, but for now, suffice to say that this is an optional portion of your function. In the middle here, we've got the function script here area in gray, and that's where we would put any code that we want to include in this function. We could put one line in here, a hundred lines, or even a thousand lines of code, and we can call it all back just with the simple name of that function. Okay, so we could create a, a subroutine, if you like, of a thousand lines of code that we can simply call back with the name of the function, for example, calculate tax. Okay? Next thing we've got here is the return statement, that's re the return portion of our function, and it returns a value when the function is called. Now, in this particular case, that is also an optional portion, and we'll discuss that further on in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at what we've got here. We've got a breakdown here of our function that we're going to go ahead and just uh, review here. As you can see here in blue, in the blue, block, blue boxes here, we've got our function declaration, that's the function and end portions, the return value, and that's optional, and it's pointing to the return statement here, and in addition we've got over here the name of the function in red, and the name of the return value, okay, so when we're returning a value or values, you can return multiple values, we name them, and it's the same way you would name any variable, and it gets passed back to the uh, script where you've called your function. Okay, we'll look at that later on in this chapter, but for now, suffice to say that the red ones are the variable names that we're attaching to these particular functions, and the blue ones are the portions of the statement where we've declared the function. Here, as you can see, the gray block is where we add our code. So we've just typed function script here, but ordinarily that's where you would type any actions that, or code that you want to include in your function. The green portion here, as you can see, is the argument. The arguments are the names of variables to be passed to the function, and these are optional. So, for example, if we had a function named calculate tax, we might want to pass um, the amount of money to be calculated to the function. In that case, that would be considered an argument. Okay, let's take a closer look at this. A function is just a script which you label and define. So, basically, a function is just a, a line of code or a series of lines of code which you can define by a name and by which variables get passed to and from that function. Okay, so it's a very simple thing actually when you think about it that way. Functions define code blocks which can be reused by simply calling the function name. So in the example we've been using so far of calculate tax, if we, if we defined a function named calculate tax, we could have, as I said, up to you know any amount of code that we want in there. We could have, say, 500 lines of code that goes through a a very complicated process of, of calculating the taxes and that code could even say go online and retrieve current ta um, tax rates and so forth and gather all that up and aggregate the information into some type of a formatted report whatever you like the point is that we're defining a code block and then we can reuse that simply by calling that simple function name in this case calculate tax so just by typing calculate tax and passing that value we activate that thousand lines of code or five hundred lines of code Okay, let's take a look, a look at the next point here. Functions allow you to group your code in a logical manner. One of the nice things about functions is that um, because of uh, the way that they're defined, you can actually 
group your code into a way that's meaningful to your project. For example, if we were creating a tax application, we might have one function to calculate taxes, we might have another function to calculate deductions, we might have another function to go online and gather up our current tax rates, and so forth. And by defining these functions in our global functions area, we can basically treat them as modules, if you like, of the larger script. So it keeps things modular, easy to understand, easy to manage, and easy to uh, basically look at a glance and understand what's going on. So if you're, if you're going to come back six months later and try and edit a script that you did last year, it's going to be very, very easy simply by looking at your functions and, and you'll see your functions in there with the meaningful names and you can just go through and change what you need to change. Functions keep your projects modular, orderly, and extensible. So we've sort of already talked about that. The one point I'll, I'll touch on here though is the extensibility. Extensibility means being able to extend an application without other portions of that application breaking. So for example, if we want to come back um, in year two and redefine our um, one of our tax functions, for example, calculate deductions, because something has changed in year two, that's fine. We can come back and do that, and it doesn't interfere at all with our other functions, such as calculating the taxes and getting the information online. So basically our application becomes extensible because we can come back and treat that one module um, in the way that we need to without affecting any of the other portions of the application. Function arguments are on, and return values are optional. Okay, so that's the final point I'm making up top here and basically we already looked at that. So, for example, a very, very simple function does not need to include an argument or a return value and we'll look at that in the, in the coming um, lessons here. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. Here's a very simple example of a function. So the function is over here. As you can see, we've defined the function by typing function and end. And we've named the function. In this case, we've named it greet user. Okay, so obviously it's something to greet a user. And in the brackets, as you can see, we've left out the optional arguments. And in the function area, you can see we've left out the return value. Okay, so we've got just a simple dialog message box in here that says, my greeting, hello world. So anytime you call this function, it's going to activate a dialog message box that says, my greeting, hello world. So uh, if you looked on the right side of the screen here in the yellow box, you'll see that the um, code that we would use to call this function in red here is simply greet user with a set of brackets and a semicolon. And that would cause that function to go ahead and activate and a dialog message box to come up. Okay, let's take a look at an intermediate example. Here we've got a slightly more complex example of the same function. <clears throat> in this particular case, you can see that we're passing an argument to our function. So we've defined our function here, function, and we've named it the same thing, greet user, but we've got an argument here in the brackets, the name. So we're going to go ahead and pass a person's name to our function. That means when we call our function, we'll be passing that name. So inside here, we've got our same dialog message box, but this time, we've concatenated the variable name onto our word hello here. So when you run this function, what you're going to get is a dialog message box that says, my greeting, hello, and then whatever name you pass to it. So if we look on the right here, you can see to call this function, the code that we would use here in red is greet user, and we would pass a name, in this particular case, Jane. By, by activating this code in our script, greet user, Jane, we would call this function, and we would get a dialog message box that says, my greeting, hello, Jane. Now let's take a look at an advanced uh, version of this same function. Here in our advanced example, you can see that not only are we passing the name to the script, identically as in the intermediate example, but now we're returning a value to our, our main script. So what we're doing here is, again, we're accepting the user's name, and we've declared it as a function called greet user, and we're going to activate a dialog message box which says, my greeting, hello, and then the person's name. And in this particular case, it's going to return the value greeted, to our main script. So that way we could use that later on to see if this person has been greeted or not greeted. Okay, and the way to call this function, as you can see here on the right, is simply a version of what we did in the intermediate example, where we've named a variable and we've assigned it the value of that function. So instead of saying greet user Jane, this time we've said my variable equals greet user Jane. And now the return value will be installed into this variable here named my variable, and we can go ahead and use that. So if we were to call this function, what would happen is a dialog message box would come up saying, my greeting, hello Jane, and then we would also uh, be assigning the value of greeted to the variable named my variable. So anytime we would call this variable, my variable, in the script after that, the value of it would be greeted. Okay, so this is very simple stuff, as you guys can see, 
and I'm just going to bring up the original chart here. There we go. As you can see, it all breaks down to this, and then as we step through it, you can see it becomes a little more clear, and as we go through the simple and, and uh, intermediate examples, you can see it's quite easy to use these. Okay, so basically, I hope that we've explained what functions are and how they work here, because we're going to use what we've learned in this lesson as a basis for going ahead through this chapter, creating some examples, manipulating them, and basically working our way up so that we're very comfortable using functions in our scripts. Just as a final comment, I would like to say that basically all developers who are creating applications are using functions in their scripts. It's a very necessary portion of uh, an advanced workflow, and if you really want to get some traction with Autoplay Media Studio and uh, create some professional stuff fast, this is a great way to do it. One of the nice things about functions is that they can be reused in all your projects. So if you create a function, for example, to send email via a PHP script, you can just copy and paste that function to any project that you want to be able to email. So for example, you can define a set of functions that you find reoccur often in your workflow and you might spend you know a single weekend doing that and then reuse those functions for the next three years so basically having function sets is a, a very handy way to um, create a very fast and efficient workflow and additionally online on, our, on the indigorose.com website in the forum you'll find um, a portion there a forum there an examples forum where people will post functions that you can go ahead and and cut and paste into your own applications uh, to use to get certain things done. So I encourage you to check that out and let's go ahead and go on to the next tutorial now.